So again, thank you, Laura. My name is Joaquin Siquez. I am a, 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 the Deputy Director for the City of Pasadena Transportation Department. And today's presentation will in large part be presented by Hai Lau from our Mobility Planning, Engineering and Operations Division. And uh, what we will be presenting today is how we use the Streetlight platform to, traffic tra to track traffic trends during uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. Again, my uh, a little background on the city of Pasadena. We're located about seven miles northeast of downtown Los Angeles, and we have a population of 140,000 people, uh, kind of our nighttime population, residential. Um, but as far as the daytime population, we are a destination city with employment centers uh, and several um, colleges or university campuses, including Caltech, uh, Pasadena City College and the Fuller Seminary, which almost doubles our uh, daytime population numbers. Um, we are a home of the Rose Bowl Stadium and the annual uh, Rose Parade. Um, and we're also unique in the distinction of um, having two freeways that uh, terminate uh, within the city. So from the south, we have the State Route 110 that brings traffic uh, into Pasadena from the south and from the north we have the, the 710 step freeway. So as, as we started using um, Streetlight platform a couple years ago and looked at how that, that gap in the freeway system really um, generated traffic within the city. And, and a lot of that was really our goal was to show how we are trying to maintain that traffic on our uh, arterials or collector streets and not uh, and not having as much impact to our neighborhood residential streets through our, our neighborhood traffic management programs. So um, initially we had run some analysis for cut through traffic uh, of the State Route 110 onto neighborhood streets. We've also used the platform for citywide cut through traffic flows, uh, looking at different entrance uh, points and exit points from the ramps and uh, and where that traffic goes to, to our uh, adjacent neighborhoods and, and cities that um, that people drive through Pasadena to get to those cities. Uh, and we've taken a close look at that uh, 710 uh, freeway ramp analysis for uh, the freeway stub. But really our, our purpose today is to talk about how um, we've used the streetlight platform uh, with respect to the COVID-19 timeframe and uh, the traffic um, components or, or tracking traffic during that COVID-19 time. So that's what the focus of our presentation will be on. Um, following the March Safer at Home order, uh, we noticed a reduction in volumes and an increase in speed on many of our arterials. And this was anecdotal, and I think we've seen this quite a bit through um, um, uh, in different cities, as, as you saw the trends in traffic. Um, but we wanted a way to be able to, to quantify that information and really track those trends. So um, in addition, as part of our response plan to COVID-19 with restaurants not being able to serve uh, indoor dining, we converted many of our streets to uh, provide outdoor dining by providing K-Rail and, and areas for restaurants to move onto the street. And this really meant changing the roadway network. So we removed travel lanes um, to accommodate that. And we wanted to be able to not only manage the traffic flow um, and monitor the traffic flow, but also wanted to be able to manage the traffic speeds by using various um, uh, traffic signal timing techniques uh, throughout the city to, to reduce that speed on these, on these corridors and a lot of our arterials, uh, not just the ones that we had the on-street dining. So our, our challenge was how do we efficiently monitor traffic volumes and speed citywide? And the solution that we used through Streetlight was a segment analysis tool. So uh, what I'll do now is hand it over to Hai Lau and he will describe the analysis and the results. Hi, thanks Joaquin. I'm, I'm Hai, the part of the Pasadena team. As Joaquin mentioned, we were looking how to evaluate um, speed and traffic throughout the city uh, due to the COVID-19 impacts. And we looked at streetlight data and the segment analysis was what uh, was applicable. Uh, based on the data, we tried to define our scope uh, to identify the study corridors, uh, bi-weekly analysis of volume data, bi-weekly analysis of speed data, uh, impact of traffic calming measures, and uh, compiling the data for some reporting. Uh, the same analysis does offer uh, additional information such as um, travel time, but we did use it as part of our study. 
So, uh, so I just wanted to go over the how we ran the analysis and what we did. Uh, the first and most important thing is identifying your segments. If you look at the map to the right, those are the segments we identified throughout the city of Pasadena. Uh, it's about approximately 23 segments to try to get a good representation of the arterials throughout the city. Um, just in general, selecting segments is difficult because you want to not have any traffic signal or traffic control device that is always stopped in between. So, and since Pasadena is a very urban environment, it is difficult to select. Um, but the best idea is just to select as many roadway segments as possible so you get the most robust data. And you can always remove um, segments that don't, the data doesn't look right or if it doesn't fit your analysis. So we went with 23. Um, I wish I could go back and do a lot more just to have a more robust data set. So after you identify your segments, you create the zone. And once you have the zone, you can run your analysis. For us, um, so that the analysis itself has several options. Uh, you can select the data periods. That's how we did the pre and post COVID data. So there is historical data. So we could run traffic data for 2019 before uh, COVID impacts and uh, after 2019, I mean, after, after uh, COVID. So that's how we run the analysis. Also, you have several options to customize, customize the analysis. So you can match how your organization tra traditionally views data, such as selecting data types, uh, day types, uh, day parts, and you can seg uh, bin the speed segments as well as travel time. So after we completed random analysis, we exported the data to Excel to compile and analyze the data. Uh, Streetlight itself has this option to visualize the data on the platform. Um, we, we, we didn't find it, it was difficult to use it to compare data analysis is because we were comparing um, several analysis with each other and the visualization is good for uh, just like a single analysis. So here, here are some of the results we got from the Streetlight platform. So you look at the graph to the right, the blue line is the 2019 um, ADT, or the average ADT of the selected roadways and the 2020 is the uh, ADT of the selected roadways. So these are the same roadways comparing uh, 2019 to 2020 data pre and post COVID. And you see the red line on the graph, that's the implementation of the stay at home order. So if you look at, uh, you can see the orange line, the traffic volumes dropped about 60% uh, after the stay at home order and has been steadily increasing. Uh, we do go from March 15th. The first time period is March 1st to uh, March 15th, which is before the stay at order and it ends at August first to August 15th. So the traffic volumes have been steadily increasing and it's about, I would say 20% about below 2019 levels at the current time. So this is the result of uh, average traffic speed. Uh, so you see another red line there. We do uh, have traffic calming. Uh, the city did implement two traffic calming measures throughout the city for the local roadways and arterials. Uh, we did have a safer streets campaign where we placed signs at the intersections warning uh, motorists of uh, additional pet and bike traffic because of the increased pedestrian and bicycle activity. And for arterials, I know Joaquin touched upon this a little bit, but we did adjust the traffic signals to rest and red to force motorists to stop at certain intersections. So if you look at the graph, um, after the stay at home order, um, average traffic speed did increase by about two miles per hour or stayed steady for about a month and then after uh, we implemented the traffic calming measures, the average speed did drop and has, has been uh, steady since. So one concern, that we uh, one concern that we received a lot was from um, just the excess speed of motorists is traveling uh, much above the speed limit just due to the decrease in traffic volume. So we took a look at the percentage of vehicles traveling 10 miles above the posted speed limit. So as you can see, after the stay-at-home order, uh, motor speeding increased by about 40%. And after we did uh, traffic calming measures, uh, the motorist speeding decreased about, by about 20% and has remained below uh, 2019 levels. And this is just for streets that did not include the, um, the traffic calming we implemented. This is just for typical streets. So we go to the next slide. And this is the impact of our traffic calming that we implemented in the arterials. So the, this graph shows the percentage change from 2019 of um, motorist speeding 10 miles above the speed limit. 
So you look at after the stay-at-home order on the selected arterials, the ones we did traffic coming, which would usually have higher ADT. So speeding increased by 50% uh, compared to 40% for the typical uh, stay-at-home order, I mean, typical street. And after we implemented the traffic calming on those certain roadways, the speeding decreased by 60% compared to 40% to the typical roadway. So, it, the, so, we, so the, it's good to use the streetlight so we can see how our traffic calming actually worked in this case. So it was a good um, visualization. So streetlight benefits. So streetlight is a cloud-based software has allowed us to continually uh, running analysis remotely and at home, so which is really useful. We don't have to um, hire traffic counters to go out there and analyze data. Uh, the vehicle updates have been at a good cadence for us to understand what is happening close to real time. Uh, the data has about a month lag time, so right now the data is up update to uh, end of August, and the data is comparable and available at the right levels to understand trends. And one thing I want to add is just that the data is historical, so you can always go back and look at the past traffic data. And so it was really useful in case you missed uh, collecting data. So you, you want to do a comparison for any type of uh, study. You can always go back and look at traffic data at that period of time. So it's really useful. Uh, next steps, we will continue to monitor traffic volumes, speed, and collision history. I, I know we didn't touch upon collision history just because it didn't include Streetlight, but we do. We did monitor the impacts of collision history, uh, impacts of uh, collisions on COVID-19. Uh, we are collecting and comparing AAT spot counts. So we did do a um, validation of streetlight data with the uh, AAT spot counts, and the general trends are very similar. So that's very reassuring. And we also uh, adjust the traffic signal timing, uh, speed, and delay based on our findings.